Okay, it's a, um, a wonderful privilege to have this opportunity to, to um, share my, my testimony and um, I guess my story starts in um, 1962. I was uh, born into a, uh, a Catholic family, uh, the youngest of four children and um, as, as a child I did, did all things Catholic. I um, made my first communion on my seventh birthday. Um, I was confirmed in, in grade five and um, went to to church on the first Friday of every month um, to uh, receive a, a special indulgence. Um, even though I was brought up Catholic, it wasn't particularly strict and there, there was sort of room to think for myself. And um, at the age of 18, I, I, I um, parted ways with my Catholic faith and, um, and um, made friends with, with the New Age movement and, um, and got fairly deeply entrenched in that. I, um, I was particularly um, particularly um, followed um, astrology, and um, you know a lot of my um, decisions were based on that. Um, I think uh, growing up, I'd always felt a sense of loneliness, and um, the astrology um, my my astrology belief um, gave me my, some sort of hope that I might find um, that special someone in my life, and. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, I, I was um, deeply lonely, and, and um, as well as the um, as well as the astrology and New Age practices, uh, I'd um, also um, made um, acquaintances with with, with drugs uh, through marijuana, and um, and that seemed to, to mask a lot of the pain that I that I'd that I'd, um, that I'd suffered, and uh, and the depression. But I think that only just worsened that depression and, um, you know, definitely throughout my life there was a sense of hopelessness and um, I guess I do thank God for, for that Catholic upbringing in that um, firstly I knew that I was a sinner and that, that um, somewhere in the back of my mind I knew that, that um, if I died I, I definitely would go to hell um, and obviously yeah, the depression of things um, and, and knowing that um, you know even suicidal thoughts you know were, were quickly um, turned away I guess because I knew that if I yeah if I'd succeeded in killing myself definitely I, I would have um, endured hell um, so yeah I, I basically felt trapped in my own life and um, yeah it wasn't uh, for a, another 15 years of um, enduring that pain that um, I was able to see God work miraculously in my life and I think um, Pastor said last week you know um, the, the encounter that he had with that 17, 17 year old girl um, saying that she'd pray that the, the, um, the train would be late um, in uh, so about March 1995 I, um, I was um, studying at night, night um, TAFE and um, I didn't drive at the time so I was catching public transport and um, it was there that, that I, I first um, encountered someone that um, was able to um, at least share, at least in part, the, the, the gospel and um, I, was, um, I was dropped off at the um, the, the uh, station that particular night, normally I, I would um, catch public transport, but um, I had a f about 30 or 40 minutes to, um, to kill, so I went into the, the pub that used to be on the corner in, um, in Spencer Street, and I was sat there, and uh, I happened to, to notice this guy sitting at a, at a table, and um, this pub was, was frequented by quite a number of um, Aboriginals and um, they would often ask you for money and um, being the shy person I was, I, I wasn't um, prepared to, to be um, accosted by a, a big burly Aboriginal. So um, I was sort of trying to keep a low key. So I, I sat in this particular place and um, I saw this fellow sitting at the table with, with all these books laid out. And um, I thought, oh, I wonder if he's got a calculator. We'd um, just got our, our term marks and, and there was a, a rather difficult um, calculation that I had to make. I was a little bit competitive with my 
with my schooling and um, I was doing quite well um, in a subject that, um, that, I'm, that I'm particularly fond of, um, horticulture. And um, so I um, approached this fellow and asked him if he, if he had a calculator and um, he said, uh, no, mate. And I said, oh, okay, what are you, what are you studying? And um, lo and behold, he, um, he said, theology. <laughs> and my um, only first thought was that he was studying for the priesthood, but um, he sort of brushed that off. And um, anyway, it, it turns out, and as I say, you know, um, God worked miraculously. And, and um, as it turned out, the, this, this um, person was, was also catching the same train back to Sunbury and um, so we, we sat together on the train and as I said before I, I'd um, suffered a lot of loneliness and, and depression and um, I'd been through a, a series of uh, quite um, tempestuous I guess um, relationships and um, that had sort of left me feeling even more empty than, than when I'd started them so um, I uh, I opened up to him quite a little bit, even though he probably wasn't um, particularly interested in, in listening. I, I guess um, he was quite the evangelist and um, was was um, was uh, looking for an opportunity to share the gospel. So um, we we shared um, phone numbers and um, we made contact and and he came around to visit and um, even though he probably didn't share the gospel in full he, he, he said enough that that um, encouraged me and um, being knowing that that I was a, a desperately wicked sinner um, and, and feeling in like that uh, in his presence I guess um, he encouraged me he said it's only grace you know he kept mentioning the word grace and um, as the the hymn writer said, you know, how precious was that, that grace when it first appeared, you know, and um, after about two or three weeks, he invited me to church and um, again, you can sort of see, the, you know, time almost stands, stood still, you know, when he asked me and um, he said, would you like to come to church tomorrow? And, and, um, and it was like the door just opened up and I thought, you know, to walk through, it was, it was it's a narrow gate, but but <laughs> it, um, it it seemed pretty wide to me at the time, and um, I, I said yes, and uh, I went to church. Um, I don't believe I I I heard the gospel that day. Um, throughout my Christian walk, I we were um, involved in, in in Pentecostal charismatic churches, and and that's. Um, the church that I attended, but um, at the end of the service, they, they, they have a tendency to, um, to say what they call the sinner's prayer. And, and um, I said that prayer, and, and, and again, it's not the prayer that saves you, but um, being able to personalise everything that I'd learnt from my um, Catholic upbringing, you know, I, um, I came to, to realise that, that Jesus not only did die for my sins and, and, and in order to forgive me, but, but he wanted to forgive me. And, um, and that was enough to, to get me over the line that, that in saying that prayer, and it's funny, you know, you still sort of feel a little bit superstitious, like you have to do something. And, and um, I did feel that, that, um, that I should have gone up to the altar call, but, um, you know, I think God sort of met me where I was at and... Um, you know, he can save you anywhere. It doesn't have to be in a in a in an altar call. It, it, he he um yeah he knew my heart and uh, and um, yeah basically within uh, a period of two or three weeks I, I did notice that change. You know, um, definitely that that burden of sin and 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 the the, the peace that that I or the the loneliness and, and depression was replaced by by God's peace. Um, I guess when I look at my um, testimony, my, my Christian walk, I, I do divide it into to certain sections and, um, you know, that was my conversion and um, I guess the next part of my, my testimony I, I, I probably called the wasted years and being involved in, in Pentecostal churches that, that don't strictly uh, follow the Bible and encourage you to read the Bible 
um, I did sort of, yeah, um, have that, that Romans chapter 7 experience where, um, you know, I sort of fell back into sin and, 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 and struggled with sin. <coughs> um, but again, you know, I, I see the work, the, the Lord working miraculously in my life and um, as, at a certain juncture where I almost hit rock bottom again, you know, the Lord met me and um, he, he provided the circumstances to, um, to affect that change in my, in my life. And um, throughout that, those 15 years, uh, or at least seven years, uh, the last seven years uh, leading up to that point, um, I'd had a, an estranged relationship with my stepdaughter and um, she'd um, gone off to England um, to study and, and um, I, I felt almost a peace, I suppose, um, to, be, to be rid of that relationship in my life. But um, as the Lord would have it again, as I said, he, he worked miraculously in my life and um, she uh, met a, a fellow in, in England and um, fell pregnant, and, um, which required her to, to come back to, to Australia um, and uh, forced me into a position to, to reconcile that relationship and um, and that's exactly what happened um, uh, again you know the lord worked in my life and and i had a, a a hernia and um and um which was operated on and um uh, after i came home from from my, the overnight stay in hospital um my stepdaughter um with a bit of encouragement i believe for from her mum um spoke to spoke to me and said you know how are you feeling and um you know can i get you a cup of tea you know but those simple words was enough to 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 bridge that gap and, and um within you know a few hours that that reconciliation was was made possible um so yeah again you know that that enabled the lord to to work in my life and um, we know that, that unless we forgive others, that, that um, we're not forgiven. And it's and um, again, yeah, my um, Christian walk started um, back up and running. And um, yeah, I, I actually started reading my Bible. You know, I, I said to the Lord, I said, you know, I felt bad that, that I'd actually hadn't read the Bible from cover to cover. And so in um, March 2014, I believe, um, I actually started reading the Bible from cover to cover and, uh, and, and also looking at some online sermons. And, and I realised, you know, that the apostasy that, that was happening in the churches and, and probably the reason why I, I'd struggled the way I did. Um, and um, as the Lord would have it, it um, I got to... Um, Jeremiah and, and um, was was beginning to feel like the weeping prophet myself, and um, yeah, I, I I was I was struggling, you know, just um, to find people that that would um, would see, you know, the state of the church, and um, I, I was in Coles this particular night and. Um, I'd seen this fellow that, that um, I briefly sort of vaguely knew um, and um, I sort of stood there. He was oblivious to my presence, but um, <laughs> um, it was um, Pastor Eddie and uh, he was uh, had his head down. He was looking for salt, uh, I believe, and um, I sort of stood there and waited for him to, um, to notice me and um, he looked up and uh, we said hello and um, he just sort of said, you know, how are you? And um, just, yeah, <laughs> how was I? It was, uh, I said, I felt like Jeremiah and, and just blurted out all this, this stuff, you know, and I said KJV and this, that and the other. And, and um, he, he told me where, where he was attending church and um, I've got a pretty good memory. So um, I stored that information and, and um, looked up the, the church on on the internet and um yeah got connected with with um faith baptist in faulkner and um and um yeah through that became a member of, of hope baptist and uh there 
the Lord continues to work and um, there it's um, been an amazing journey but um, just to be able to sort of see the work the Lord work in your life it's um, yeah it's, it's such a huge blessing so I just uh, thank you and uh, just pray that you're, you're blessed by by this testimony and, and just knowing that that um, the Lord you know, especially concerned individually with each and every one of us. Thank you.